Welcome back to another episode of Picking Up the Pixels RPG Love. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Musim. Hello. And Mina. Hi, hi. Uh, let's just dive right into it. Musim, what have you been playing this past month? Uh, okay, well, I'll start off with my Tales of Vesperia check-in, which <laughs> I barely moved a couple inches. Um, basically, I I got in the game, like I forced myself to get in, and I think I'm a little bit burnt out on the game at the moment. Um, <laughs> Understandably. And... I was looking around online to see, okay, is there anything I need to miss? And it's talking about all these places that I haven't been or hadn't heard of. Oh. There's evidently a city that I can bring back to life. And oh, I'm Musim, you made the you made the 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 cardinal uh, sin yeah. of playing a tales game, and yeah. you looked at the fact, and you're like, cool, I missed about 400 things <laughs> and about 30 side quests and uh, 15 yeah. titles. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. like, basically what I started doing is I just started revisiting all the towns to see random cutscene <gasps> things that just oh, would no. happen. <laughs> right. Yeah, the old Tales games had this thing of, like, any time you progress forward, you actually need to go backwards a little bit yeah. and catch some stuff, which that they stopped doing that at some point. It was way less egregious about that, where yeah. it's like, no, just everything's forward progression now, but... It, um, Vesperia must have still been part of that. You need to turn around after you go forward. Yeah, it's uh, well, like, and you look in like the game facts walkthrough, and they're like, yeah, I can't list all of the little cutscenes that you can activate by unlocking right. things because there's too many of them. You just right. have to go back to old places, and like, <clears throat> they're mostly entertaining, and like most of the writing's entertaining. It's just like between going that and then between my characters constantly wanting me to have them talk to each other. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to play my phone game mostly while I'm actually playing <laughs> Vesperia. Uh, yeah, as much as I love the skits, Vesperia, I felt like, had too many of them. They're all good, I mean, and they're all good character building. It's just sort of like, all right, this is the fourth one I've watched here. Like, I, I'm like, oh my god, there's a fifth one? Yeah. Oh, heaven help you when you start cooking. Then that's a whole other set of skits. <laughs> and then I went back to, like, the... Uh, uh, I don't remember what the city's called, but it's it's a city in the sky type place, and uh, they gave me some like ancient weapon that's like one of seven or one of eleven, and hmm. I'm like how do I get the rest of these? And I started looking into it, and it's like <laughs> oh you have to go here, here, and here, and I go to those places, and I'm like they are unlocked, but I I thought I was at the final dungeon, and then I I guess I have to get to a certain point in that dungeon, or I get through that dungeon, and there's another one. I'm I'm really not clear what's going on. Um, it's like a Persona Four thing where it's like it's the final dungeon. <gasps> There's another one. <gasps> another one. <laughs> yeah. So I'm at the dungeon that popped up in the middle of the ocean, which I'm assuming I'm going to get through it, and there's going to be one more. And I hope right. to I, anything that, like, please change who the main enemy is. Like, the current main enemy, I feel, is... Like, I guess in terms of the game world, he's getting results, but I feel like he's really inept. And mm. <laughs> maybe not the... I don't know. I feel like he's a disappointing villain in a way. Like, not... Like, it doesn't, like, ruin the game for me by any means like that. You know, you're, you're mainly right. playing the game for the, the main cast, but... Uh, he's like Final Fantasy IX's Kuja. Like, he's fine, but he's not really around enough to really yeah, hate that much. Yeah. He's just... A character who barely talks, and then all of a sudden, ha, 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 I'm evil, you know? But Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I... Uh, I, I barely played The Witcher, but I did play it. Um, I loaded it up one night. I'm like, okay, let's go back in. Because last time when I'd made it into Act 5, I just started walking in one direction. Got attacked by a bunch of uh, noon wraiths, is I guess what they're called. Um, <laughs> noon then died. And so I basically just loaded it up, started wandering around, found like a town and then a bridge I had to fix and loaded up on quests. And evidently there's... Uh, some weird love triangle thing with this woman who's supposed to marry this guy, but both the woman and the guy are in love with other people who are with other people, and it's, um... <laughs> Jeez. Like, I think I can progress the game without solving their problems, but I'm not sure, and that compulsory need to complete, like, all the side quests that I can in front of me I'll is still with it, me. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> do it, just beat the game. I know. <laughs> I'm so close, like, but... Anyway, I I'll I think I just probably need a break from from games. So I 
so today, a uh, quick plug for a local store in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Throw House Games. They had a uh, first 200 people in the store get a free game day. Um, wow. And uh, I went up there, and my free game was Tekken for the PS1. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, like that's that's not a – like I, I was worried it was all going to be like crappy – sports games or something right <laughs> so i was some relieved that cars was, tie-in game yeah i was relieved that it was something that had critical reception to it even if it like it was just the disc in a sleeve but that's okay yeah but while i was there um i picked up a sega cd because they had mm. one and i've been telling myself if they ever got one i would just get it and uh came home and played some shining force cd for the first time yeah, there um, we go. So, uh, for those that don't know, don't know, Shining Force CD is uh, a re-release of two games that were originally on the Game Gear called Shining Force Gaiden 1 and 2. Uh, and these games take place story-wise between Shining Force 1 and Shining Force 2. Oh, okay. Um, so, in this game, like, you're the kids of all the people from Shining Force 1, and, like, the whole intro scene is, like, Hey, here's your like some of your old party, and they're all old and ruined and like ruling the kingdom. And then these guys show up and put one of them in an infinite sleep and beat them up. And then the kids show up and say, "We'll take care of it." And uh, <laughs> off you go. For a split second, it sounded like um, Golden Sun to me. I never played any of the Shining Force games, but mm. you were like describing it. And I was thinking of like the the later Golden Sun games where you play as like the kids of the. All the heroes. That's or cool. That's cool. So. I've always heard good things about Golden Sun. I never checked yeah. it out though. But uh, so, uh, Shining Force, right? So it plays exactly like Shining Force One and Two. Which, if yes. you've never played one, then they play a lot like the Fire Emblems, um, with less of the uh, paper rock scissors type uh, <laughs> uh, combat weakness strength stuff. Um, but like other than that, it's still like it's on a grid. When you attack someone, it goes to like a cutscene type thing where they attack type deal. And when you reach level eighteen or okay, I, I have not reached level eighteen in this game. I assume because it's so much like the other games that once I reach level eighteen to twenty or somewhere in there, I will be able to promote my class to something else. Oh um, right. <clears throat> so um, the translation on the game seems seems pretty poor. Um, <laughs> the uh, like, like the screen greets you, and all the Shining Force games has like some little kid with a book. And they're like, "Hey, you want to read a book? Let's read about the something or other." And this one's like, "Pick a book," because there's four books. So I picked the first one. I wish I had written down the name because it was like, like I really like I read it and I thought, "Is this? Did it? Did it glitch? Do I need to reboot?" Like, <laughs> that can't be the name. Like it was like, it may as well have said, um, like evil darkness hideout text or something like that like something <laughs> right. it was just it was so weird it's just like untranslated text it's like wait a minute <laughs> yeah um and honestly after playing this game i have no idea why this is on the sega cd like <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> like i could have guessed that anyway i mean it's kind of expecting that just because like game gear ports what are they doing um, yeah but like there is like it looks exactly like the other two. Why didn't they just stick this thing on Genesis? Like, <laughs> right? Um, Hoping Shining Force was gonna sell Sega CDs, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm only like two missions in. Like the second mission's kind of interesting because you you're basically you were in a ship, then your bo- boat got knocked ashore, and they immediately put you in a fight, and none of your guys have weapons, and oh, wow. so you have to go and look through the rubble of the ship while guys are attacking you to grab like sticks and clubs like it's a little annoying but it was also kind of like you know for the time that's kind of thinking ahead like how can we make this story wise more interesting (laughs) and then after that I immediately sold all these sticks and things that I beat the enemy up with to the weapon person in town which is like (laughs) what a jerk move right Right. I just grabbed this branch, beat this guy with it. Now you're going to give me 10 gold. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> I'm going to buy a sword for me. But. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. Next game I played. Um, debatable on whether it's an RPG, but I told myself, you know what? If, if we've talked about Deus Ex and Mass Effect, then this counts. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Okay. Uh, so I uh, picked up Vampire because you posted on Twitter, Boston, mm, that was yeah. on sale. <clears throat> or Vampire. Whatever. Yeah, unfortunately vampire? they unfortunately they pronounce it vampire, but it's it's totally vampire. But yeah, that's that's totally an RPG. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I was trying to remember if you had talked about it on here before, or if I'd only heard you guys talk about it on TVGP. But uh, yeah. I don't recall it. Yeah, I don't. Maybe. I don't have a memory of it. So. Yeah, I forgot about it. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only got through the intro. Um, I just got to the hospital. Mm. The, uh, I really like. Uh, I like a lot of the penchantial that's in front of it. I, I don't know if it'll deliver on art right now, but I love it when right. you press your vampire senses button and the thing you see is, oh, this person in front of me is worth 6,000 ex- excuse me, 6,000 experience. <laughs> right. The fangs come out and you're like, yes. <laughs> so, like, the temptation is always there. Like, they... They, it just it's like the perfect thing to tempt a player to actually right. being the evil vampire yeah because like especially in the beginning if anyone hasn't played it like <clears throat> six thousand experience like your first couple levels are maybe like a hundred or two hundred experience so six thousand you're looking at that person you're like that's like ten levels man oh man <laughs> oh man this game would be so easy <laughs> oh man it, but you have that whole cool relationship chart where like yeah. I know if I eat this person then this person who they're married to or whatever, they're going to be super pissed. So I might miss out on some side quests or dialogue or a relationship with another person. That whole thing. Yeah, I'm... I, I predict that I'm really going to enjoy this game and we're going to have trouble finishing it because of that very thing. Because it's going to be like, I really want to eat this person, but I'm afraid of missing out on this. And <laughs> right. uh, let me do my internet research. And uh, I don't like the answers they told me. They're both bad. <laughs> I I feel like that's a m- much easier choice, or at least it was for me when they came out with the easy difficulty. Because like, all right, now combat is stupid easy. So I never have to worry about eating anybody because I really didn't want to. Um, but I, there was always that temptation on normal mode because... The battles were, like, just a little too hard. And I was like, well, I can't... You can't really grind, and I'm kind of... The combat's not great, so... Yeah. It's not like you can use strategy or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I've been blowing vampire smoke bombs at people. Yeah. That's worked. (laughs) The combat's definitely not great, but it hasn't, like... Made me throw a controller across the room yet. Yeah. Um but I, I started on normal. I almost did easy, and I thought, well, like, I kind of want the experience thing there. So, Right. Um, but it's, like, that chart seems really cool, and it seems like something I'm going to want to try and, like, 100% on it. Um, yeah. And I am also have hopes in that How Long to Beat says that you can complete the whole game and get everything extra in, like, 27 hours or something like that. Oh, that's not bad. And that sounds highly appealing after you know, trying to play Witcher and Tales. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, it seems like a cool game. Uh, the uh, the last game I played has taken over my life. I blame you, oh. Mina. This oh, is no. Epic 7. <laughs> ah. um, Yay! It's a mobile game! <laughs> it's, it is a mobile game that, like feels the least like a mobile game out of any mobile game I've played. I kind of explained it that it has like elements that makes it kind of feel like Diablo and like the 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 way that like you kind of have like loot progression mm. and it's less about it's it's less about characters cuz characters are nice but you can make a lot of things work in this game. So it's not all about like did you get good luck in the gacha? Good luck in the gacha just kind of gets you like the shiny foil cards of mm. like the game, not really the forward progression of beating things in the game, because you can make a lot work. Yeah, like I'm I'm getting to a point where I gotta figure out my team a little bit better. Like I I feel like Ross Sinclair is not cutting it for me anymore, and I don't know what <laughs> to do about it. Like is he... We could really talk about what you have and I could help <laughs> you out quite a bit. There are a lot of really good, like like new characters that immediately get you fast progression really fast um like one of the three star heroes that's really good for a lot of early beginners is Kiris she's uh an elf girl um I, three star unit i just got her like a night or two ago cuz she's like a yes. is she a thief or archer. an archer or something okay she's an archer 
And what she has is like her her um so every unit has like three abilities. Sometimes one of them's a passive, but her first ability um poisons. So it did like so she just like fires a poison shot. Her second ability um basically extends debuffs on the enemy, like all enemies on the field, AoE extension of debuffs. And then her third ability basically um, improves her first or second ability. Um, so what you do is, is when you use her, you improve her S1 or her skill, first skill, and basically turn that one poison arrow into three poison arrows. And poison is scaled off of your enemy's HP and not any other damage besides that. That's how poison works. So on really healthy enemies, when you have Kyrus and you fire off the three poison shots onto something, you get poison stacks on the enemy. And if you have other debuffs that you're dropping on the enemy, then you have her extend those debuffs further. And then you can just kind of like whittle the enemy down with basically no real damage on your team except the fact that her poison is killing them because of their HP being so high. That's awesome. So she is like a really good low level unit that requires the tiniest bit of investment and you can get like big rewards out of her. But then again, like it, it has to be on like enemies with a lot of health that she's doing all that devastating damage to. Um, yeah. Like really good unit. Like where I'm at right now is I, I think I'm at the final fight in chapter nine or whatever it is. It might not be. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know who you're up against. Like it's a, a water unit. <laughs> it, it might be. I, I don't remember who it was. I just remember getting there and like I tried oh, I it know. like a couple times and I'm like, I'm I'm not prepared for this. I need to figure out how to oh, level I something know. else. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a couple ways to get through a lot of these um a lot of those walled fights. One is by leveling a unit that's appropriate for it, and two borrow a friend and just have them beat the hmm. <laughs> the nonsense for you. So I I could add you, and you could just plow through it with one of my units. Or, with, like, Karis would help you there, because it is a water unit that you're up against, and <clears throat> that does work. Um, the, I believe that particular fight, you need to make sure you take out her, her cronies, though, because they become a massive pain. Like, a lot of the times you might have been able to just kind of ignore, like, the the enemies on the side, but I believe she comes along with two mage friends and they do crazy go nuts damage that you don't want to deal with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, l- yeah. Like, uh, okay. Well, and I've been, I've been preparing for this podcast cause it's like, I, like my lit, <laughs> my list of notes on this are questions I'm going to ask Mina on the air. About this game. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so, I'm like my main team right now is, uh, <clears throat> Except I didn't write down their names. Um, like, I'm still using Ross. I have him in the mm-hmm. front position. I got mm-hmm. the... Uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, the purple spear lady that you unlock with your relationships. She's, like, blonde. Oh, 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 Lorena. Yeah. And she seems to just do massive damage. Um, she is She is a very one-dimensional unit. All about doing a ton of damage. Just dumping tons of damage. Um... She's one of the... Because you get two MLs that are unique, or Moonlights, or Light Darks, or whatever we want to call them. You have her and Elson. Um, she's the dark unit that you can get for free. And her investment... Like, if you invest well into her, she's really good. But she does require um, a lot of investment, and she's pretty much all about just dumping damage, and that's it. So... Gotcha. She doesn't have, like, a lot of specialty to her kit. Okay. Well, and then my other, who is it? I got a ranger whose name I also don't remember, but she's the blonde elf ranger who's in the story who Silk. hates you at first. Huh? Is it Silk? No, she's not. Oh. This was oh. one of my pulls at the beginning. She's like a four or five oh. star unit. Isaria? Yes. You have a five star. Okay, so that's that's Isaria. She is a, a uh, wood archer, um, yeah. wood ranger. Yeah, and like I've... And honestly, like, through half the game I was using her wrong, and then I read a thing where they're like, yeah, you really should just be using her to recharge other people's abilities. So I now, now I yeah. just have her recharging Lorena all the time. Like, the part I'm the really... The best thing you can do right now, yeah. The part I feel like I'm really getting kind of screwed on is I don't have a good... Well, 
let me think. My healer right now is Aether, and yeah. I don't. I feel like Aether's maybe not as good as as that character could be healing wise. But I did just get Hazel. Is that her name? The glasses. Hazel. Yeah. The the fire yeah. healer. Yeah. And I don't um, have her up yet, but I I feel like some people really like her, but I'm not. You can do a specialty change with some of these units um, that you've brought up. Hazel is one of the ones that can go through a specialty change. And what specialty changes are specifically only for three-star units. And it basically gives them, like, it powers them up quite a bit. And it's, it's like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, the equivalent here to, like, something else. Like, w when you look at a five-star, they've just got, like, all the stuff with them. They're ready to go. Um... Some of them need more investments to be as good as some others, but like a five star just comes as like a complete full packaged unit. So the thing is, is like in the case of Hazel, Hazel by herself is okay, but you have to like dump runes into her and you dump all sorts of stuff into her and basically you power up to being a pretty good healer. Um, I definitely say better than Aether. Um, Though there are people who use Aether quite well in certain content. Um, hmm. But I, I would I would definitely say Hazel over Aether. Okay, so I'll, I'll keep working on her. Um, so uh, I, this game, I struggle a lot with the inventory and what to get rid of and what to keep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I wish it was not <laughs> as tight, like, all the time. Um, I've started sacrificing blue equipment now. I figured that would happen, but... Um, like monsters, like are they just for leveling up? Uh, I guess for the audience <laughs> to level up <laughs> stars uh, on characters, you have to sacrifice units of uh, I think it's the same star that they're presently are. Mm -hmm. So like for to get a three star to a four star, you have to sacrifice three three stars. Yes, and to get uh. a four star to a five star, you have to sacrifice four four stars. Yep. Makes so sense. the one of the units the two you get... star monsters you're talking about. Yeah. Um, their only purpose is to feed. That okay. is that is it. No reason um, the... to save any of them then necessarily. N no. Um, though I do have someone in my guild who has built um, those two stars up to six stars, and boy does he get some people sometimes when they come after him thinking that they're like, oh, look at this, look at this guy, look at this guy with his. Dumb two star units leveled up to six star, and then they get rolled, and they're like, "I just got rolled by somebody using two star units." <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that's always fun, but no, their their main purpose is fodder. The only difference between those two star um, junk units that we're, we're um, discussing and the phantasmas, the the uh, the silver wolves and the gold wolves and the um, the terra wolves, the the black ones. Um, the, the difference between those are, uh, those get, like, a bump to XP, um, the wolves, the Terra wolves and the, what, Giga wolves and whatever, they get a bump to XP, so having them in your grinding, leveling, whatever party or whatever, um, they get more XP out of them, so it's kind of better to use those to, like, you know, work your way up to the, like, using them as the three-star, four-star, five-star fodder or whatever, like... They work better because you can level them faster. Gotcha. Um, well, and that's what I've been doing is because you can breed them. So I've been yep. raising those and then immediately leveling them up to three stars and then yep. getting that three star leveled up so I can make them a four star has been difficult. Um, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, oh, what else was I going to ask you about? Um, do tanks matter at all in this game? Like, I've got a few tank units. Like, one of them was a cool four-star, like, Valkyrie-looking lady. Um, oh, Rose. Yeah, and, like, but <laughs> she seems like her skills are all about making her take damage for everyone, and then she dies really easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when it comes to talking about, like, tanks... Um, I found that healers actually make some of the best tanks in the game. Hmm. Um, because a lot of healers might have something that says, like, <clears throat> their heals scale off of HP. So if you give them a lot of HP and some defense gear or whatever, they become, like, these giant tanking walls that are also healing at the same time. So I found a lot of 
a lot of um, use out of, of using healers rather than tanks. Tanks do hold a place, um, but it's kind of like what are you like? How you build them? Um, one of the tanks that I have, a five star. His name is Kral. Um, I've built him up for like HP and defense, or what, and a little bit of speed. And the way he works is, is once you get his health down into like a dangerously low position, he turns around and basically does all of his HP that he's missing to any enemy, unmitigated damage. Like you cannot, you cannot stop that amount. You cannot lower that amount. He does that flat number to the enemy, regardless of element. And Jeez. he just dumps it on somebody. So if you build him up, like, let's say you manage to get, like, 20,000 HP on him, right? And then um, you get him as low as, like, maybe, like, he loses 16, you know, thousand of his health. And then you just do directly 16,000 to another enemy. So. Gotcha. Like... It, it really depends on how you build some of them, but I find, like, in the case of Roz, Roz, um, the real reason why Roz is really nice is his S2. If he did not have his S2, he would not be a very good unit, in my opinion. Um, his S2 automatically tells someone who has the highest attack on your team to, hey, come along and, you know, follow up the attack with me. So if you have, like, somebody who's really strong on your team who does a lot of damage, then Roz can be like, hey, come along, Lorena. Do your S1 with me. Mm. Um, so that's kind of how you use him. He's not that great at tanking, but um, it, when we discuss, like, just the pairing of DPS, he works really nice as a companion. It never occurred to me that that's, like... Uh, like, I've been reading my character skills. <laughs> I have not been reading his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that S2 um and and the way Lorena works is every time she hits with her S1, she gets a stack of damage that can never be removed. So like she she builds up to five stacks and she's doing a lot of damage. So when she's paired up with like Roz, um so he does the hey come along, basically the S2 that builds up one stack. So then you get her up to two stacks and then you three, four, five and once you cap out at five you're doing the maximum damage that she can do. Which should be a lot because you build her for straight damage. Yes, yeah, like her um, her level three skill, like later on in a fight, like usually like halves the boss's HP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that move is really nice because it also pushes back the um, their turn as well. Oh, I didn't um, realize that. That's awesome. Yeah, like I yeah, so she pushes back some t- turn and also does a lot of damage. Um, once she also has a specialty upgrade, by the way. Um, I just and, unlocked it uh, in oh, terms okay. of it's an option now, but like the things I got to do to get it um, will probably be next year. <laughs> right, right. Make sure you activate it. Though. That's the yeah. most important thing is to activate it because it doesn't start counting any of that stuff until you activate it. Um, and it is a long process to get it, you know, done, but. I, I kind of think of it as like just leave it up and not worry about it because you'll slowly get there anyways. Gotcha. Um, but it's it's really nice because you basically power up that unit in a big, big, big way. Um, I believe at some point, like somewhere on that chain, if she kills something with her S three, she has a chance to get her S three back again. Oh, that and would be sweet. Like she already gets like a. <laughs> oh wait, no, that is her S three because her S three she hits it and then she has immediately gets to go again. Yeah. And then okay, yeah, I haven't gotten that thing. So, uh, combat readiness. What is it? I seem to have my team equipped for. That's the for turn it. pushing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's the turn pushing. So if you have combat readiness, that that's like for you, combat readiness pushes your turns faster. Combat readiness against somebody else is pushing them away from having their turn order. Like there's a there's a little bar because um, Boston has no idea what we're talking. No, about. There's a little bar <laughs> with everybody's little faces on, like where the where, like when their turns coming around. But it's not exact because it's based on it, it's based on just like okay, this is where they are on the bar. But if they have like faster speed, like let's say I have a unit that has 200 speed versus a unit that has like I don't know, let's go real low 70 speed. That 200 speed unit is just gonna, like, even if they're up here at the very top of the, the, you know, bar, they're going to, like, speed down that bar real fast and 
jump turns, which is why you might feel like somebody's going really, really, really fast and beating you to the punch all the time. They probably have a very high speed unit, um, and that's why they're they're lapping you. <laughs> gotcha. So cool. Yeah, I've been. I I don't know. I, I've been trying to learn it all, but man, there's a it, there's it, a lot of systems. That, yeah, it's it's a complicated game, and like the. I, I'm losing a lot of time lately just to my inventory stuff, so I'm just I've accepted that I'm just gonna have to be spending most of the sky stones, I think is what they're called, on uh, expanding my inventories for the moment. Yeah. Just because I don't like I went through and unequipped everything except for the stuff on my main party and tried to get rid of all my green and brown equipment stuff, so now I'm just down to blues, purples, and reds. And now I'm slowly <laughs> like I, I don't quite have enough purples that I can get rid of all my blues, but I'm getting there. I, I assume you're probably, like, pure red for everything. So, it's it's interesting, because, like, <clears throat> in some in some ways, having, like, a lower tier gear is kind of beneficial, in a way. Like, if you... So, there are, there are flat stats in the game, and then there's percentage stats in the game. Um, so, the way that um, upgrading gear is every plus three that you have on a gear you get a roll into one of those stats on the equipment. Um, so if you have, like, let's say, a a red piece of gear, or, or an epic gear, as it's called, the epic gear uh, has already the four stats that can, you know, have, have points into. So technically red gear has, like, the higher stats at the start. But let's say you have, like, a red piece of gear that has, like, two percentages and two flats, then you're running like a 50-50 that you're going to get something to roll into that flat or something into your percentages. Now, if you have like, let's say, oh, I don't know, like maybe a blue piece of gear or a purple piece of gear, then until you reach a certain threshold of the pluses, so like I believe the blue gear is like pl after plus six, maybe plus six, after plus nine, thank you. After plus nine, <laughs> um, it will add your third stat and your fourth stat. So let's say you have a blue piece of gear that has two percentages in. Well, then you have a 100% chance of something going into those percentage stats. And if you really like mm. those percentage stats, then you get points into those stats directly. And you don't have to run the risk of like, I have this really nice red piece of gear but it has two flat stats and then you upgrade that gear all the way and everything went into flat and you're just like well this gear that was really good at the start now looks really bad so like for your tank guy like if you had a per blue gear with percentage just for health and, and defense, defense like that's all you'd need that's for him. great That'd be exactly that's what great. you wanted okay yeah, and then, like, I mean, you run the risk of, like, you know, getting some flats at the end, but you've guaranteed that points were going to be poured into those <clears throat> those early percentages. So, gotcha. in a way, the blue gear or, you know, could be, like, potentially better, or the purple gear. I actually really like purple gear, because the odds of you getting a, uh, an, an epic gear that has, like, four stats that you want, and then just getting really lucky that everything goes into the, the stats you want, that's... That's like that's like a lot of RNG to juggle. Whereas if you have like um basically like a purple gear with three percentage stats or two percentage stats and maybe like speed flat because speed can only be flat. Hmm. Um, if you have something like that, that's only three things you're fighting for, and you know that like you really want them into one of those three, you have a higher chance of getting what you want more. So, I think the purple gear, in in, in my opinion, is actually some of the best gear you can get. Gotcha. Um, Good. But, okay. Well, I will. I'll spare everyone else from asking you more questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for the tutelage. It's it's what no I needed. No problem. <laughs> the game has a lot of systems. It's a lot of fun though, and it is like one of those mobile games that I've like. You know, you can complain about a lot of different mobile games for a lot of different reasons, but I think even with my complaints that I have on Epic Seven, it's the one that I have the most fun with right now. So, yeah. I mean, like the like it is. <laughs> dungeons in it that you can get through fairly quickly and you generally aren't surprised by a dungeon you know if you're going to go into one or not like it has yeah. kind of anime cut scenes occasionally the uh a lot of the <laughs> like artwork's pretty high grade although it's it's definitely into the pervy side of the women a lot but yeah <laughs> um, thankfully they kind of they also kind of give you um some guys too so there's a little little bit of equal opportunity <laughs> 
it's uh yeah like one of the websites i went to and i was reading something on i'm like okay let's see what else they have on here let's see there's there's weapons there's promotions there's this there's waifus what (laughs) (laughs) wife waifus whatever they're called i don't know yeah what the anime kids say but right. um, it, it's a it's just a really high quality game that I like a lot. Right now they're doing that Guilty Gear crossover. Um, oh no! So yeah, I got Saul from it. Like, and that was oh no. He's actually legit. I mean, it's going to be a pain for you to farm all of his stuff. But if you manage to farm him completely, um, you can use all of his his like uh, his spares as fodder for himself to get him to six star. So. Um, he's actually a really, really good unit. Well, super and good. I have not. I've only gotten one of Saul. I do not know that I'm going to get these. Others <laughs> the it's that's fine. Getting at least one. Um, he is a really good unit, though. Just looking at his uh, his kit. Yeah, like he he seems cool. Um, and it would be nice to get like all the others, but like. Uh, like I'm pretty sure I could do the fights on them, but like to get that one, like because at the time. Like when this event started, I'm like, just okay, cool. Here's the path. I'm just gonna grind this, and I did it all day because I could only clear the easy version of that one mission <laughs> that yeah. only gave you like nine of the currency, and you needed like <laughs> a thousand of the currency to get them or something. So much. And and I got it. And now like, I think I might get a second one of him in that the. Uh, I think I might be able to complete that tournament, maybe, like, because now I can complete the normal version of these missions. Um, yeah. But all the other stuff, I, I don't know that I have any hope for. Like, and that was a lot of work just to do that. And I don't, I don't think. I and can... I believe, I believe, like at the end of the event, like if you manage <clears throat> to just walk through all of the story, you get another soul for free. Like, once we get to the final week of this, uh, this event. Oh, nice. Um, so you're you're definitely going to get that one. Okay. Um just by walking through the story. <laughs> cool. That I will absolutely do. So but it's uh I don't know, I really like this. Like it feels like like when I played like Strike Force or Brave Exvius, I I still feel like I'm playing a phone game like to a large degree. Yeah. Um and when I played this one, I feel less like I'm wasting my time and more like I'm in this cool immersive place like there there are definitely plenty of things to to criticize i'm really not fond of trying to get to a particular region in the game yeah because <laughs> um, you have to just walk through all the other regions to get there but uh oh you you haven't done the little button that kind of backs you out on the map there's it like there's a button that kind of backs the map out a little bit like all the like it, and then you can see all the areas that you can click from like the map. Oh, I guess I found that. <laughs> that would be great. Well, good. Yeah, it's it's. I believe it's on the top. Well, not maybe at the very top left, but it's on the left hand side. There will be like a little arrow that if you click on, um, it kind of like backs out the map, and then you can kind of click which chapter you want to go to. I will look for that. That would have been yeah. like when I was grinding for Hazel and Silk, who both have like kill five hundred of this enemy type missions. Um, that would have been nice. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was a real pain, like figuring out how, oh, where. Like, I looked online, I think Silk was the one where they're like, yeah, you got to go to region, whatever the region with the fifth chapter yeah. of the story is, and fight bugs and stuff. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Figuring out my way back there was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I really like that game. Um, so. That is... Armina, what have you been playing this past month? So, I let me start with what I played, like, super recently, like yesterday. Because I, I haven't been feeling well. And I saw this game, and it reminded me of another game that Boston likes, hopefully. Hmm. And I was like, I'm going to play it. And so it's called Swag and Sorcery. <laughs> okay. um, what a name. So, how do I describe this game? It's somewhat like a Kairosoft game that ah. um, was about like taking care of a little RPG village and sending your little RPG, um, you know, heroes off into the battlefield to do stuff, and then you kind of improve your town. What's the name? What, what was the name of that Kairosoft game? Uh, Dungeon Village. 
something Mo- yeah dungeon village yeah. something something like that it was, it was like was dungeon definitely... village and like monster island those were like the two <laughs> the two that were I believe, similar <clears throat> i believe it was the dungeon village one that i'm yeah. thinking of um but it's kind of like that like it's not a one for one copy and it's on the it's it's on pc it's on steam it's where i got it it might be on other things i don't know but <laughs> um so it's definitely one of those games that, you know, it, it's playing itself. It has, like, the little dudes going out into the field and the side scroll of watching them, like, traverse their little dungeon thing. It has a silly story going along with it. I don't know how to describe it. It's fun. It, it looks like it's pretty lighthearted. I'm watching the trailer here. <clears throat> it's it's adorable. I, I like it, and it really scratches that, that itch that if you liked that sort of Kairosoft game... It uh, it really fulfills that 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 need. It's it's cute. Yeah. I like it. This I looks mean. fun. <laughs> so um, and it's not that expensive. It's fairly cheap, if I remember correctly. I it's on sale right now for nine dollars and seventy five cents. Yeah, I'd pay that again. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That looks so, that looks neat. Yeah. So I mean, give it a shot if you if you like you know, Kairosoft games and kind of want something just a little. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, it's it's right there. So um, the next thing that I played recently um, is Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> um, big old title. <laughs> um, it is a point and click kind of... It's not even a point and click. Like, I don't know. It's like... You walk around and investigate with maybe the A button. It's like a yeah. step away from being a point and click, I suppose. I mean, you you do like look at like I don't know, like dead bodies, and then kind of click on what you want to investigate. But it's it's a, uh, I mean, it's it's Ace Attorney. It's Miles Edgeworth. Yeah, it's like a great. puzzle, visual novel <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, it's. Great, I like it. And like, what's weird is like you're you're so used to like the like maybe if you played like Phoenix Wright games, you're just kind of like you know that you're just doing like screen panning and like that one's more of a traditional point and click. This mm-hmm. one, you actually move him around on the screen, like he actually walks on the screen. Ooh, and then you like actually walk up to stuff and investigate. And the first case, which. Um, true to form of like the, the the series where they always give you the they, they tell you right away like this is this is the bad guy like right. this dude this dude's bad his okay. name is Dr. Like, Evilman <laughs> like, I, actually I believe it was Jockstrap uh, right. <laughs> but but his name was Jocks right like Jock yeah yeah Yeah. and then you combine it next to it and it's jockstrap (laughs) and he's like he's got like an olympic medal and like his hair's got like he's got like the the band on his head and and it's just like like this is the bad guy i love these games (laughs) so the names are always good um what what a first case you know because it like what i really liked about this one compared to like some of the other cases that I've played from the Phoenix Wright series is like a lot of those cases <clears throat> you feel like the first case is very much of a tutorial kind of throwaway case it's mm-hmm. just kind of like we're just going to teach you the mechanics so that way when we get to the real meat of the story you know you're going to be like oh I know how to do this and you're less of like a, a new player bumbling around in it in this case um, and I don't feel bad about spoiling it because the, the game is pretty forthright and like what happens the case sets up like a like two mysteries kind of at the same time resolves one but doesn't resolve like uh one that feels quite bigger Mm -hmm. than the the case you solve so what's what's really interesting is it it doesn't it doesn't put a like it doesn't solve it at all it's just kind of like it then like it ends that first case with like you know that 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 moment of like that that mystery that didn't was that wasn't solved it would you know carry on throughout the rest of the you know the mm. next following days right <clears throat> and then you get like this sort of feeling of like oh this first case is actually pretty important for the rest of the game That's so cool. it's not like a it's not a throwaway case at all and it's quite interesting what happens um so i know this is an older game 
but I never, I never played it. So yeah, <laughs> when I, I've, I've finally gone to it and it's really good. Um, the, the second case, uh, and, and I won't spoil this one. The second case that I started, um, is pretty, pretty interesting in its own way because it, it brings up a lot of the stuff from the other Phoenix Wright games, like about Miles Edgeworth. So if you're really invested in, in his story and like about him, um, it kind of like does a bunch of nods to like the the lore mm. of Miles Edgeworth. And so that's that's really nice that we're we're getting through. I haven't beaten the second case, but I'm already super into this game and I really am glad that I'm playing this. Yeah. Um And then the third game that I played, um I don't want to say too much about what happened because I feel like that's too much. Like I, I don't like I, I want people to play this game. So yeast, yeast eight. Mm. Um, I don't know how far you got into it, so I don't know like what I can say. But like, so the game has been like pretty much this like this whole like find person, bring them back, find another person, bring them back. Like you're 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 basically collecting all the the survivors on this island. And then, like, I just reached the point in the game where it's like, it's like, okay, that thing that you've been doing this entire time, put a pause on that. Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) Because we're going to stop that. And now we're going to do something now for something completely different. (laughs) Um, And it's like, it's like, you aren't allowed to go continue anything. It's like, no, this is the most important thing. Like, and, and you would agree that this is the most important thing happening. But it's and and wow, the way it ends. Which chapter are you on? I, it, I don't remember what chapter it is. Like so, uh, did you just get to is. like? Did you just encounter this section? I I just wrapped up this section. Okay. I just wrapped it up. I I now have. So I think I now have a, a little girl in in the 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 village now or whatever we're calling it. Okay, I think that puts you in chapter. Four or finishing chapter four or something like that. Okay. Okay. Right. I don't remember how that first section ends. So, but anyway, I'll stop talking. It's <laughs> it's uh, what a good game. <laughs> I I'm playing a lot of really good games right now. Yeah. This is one of them. So um, I I don't know how to like I the, I, I believe we're now back on track with the. The normal gameplay again we're, we're going back to the normal stuff but like that like interlude of not whatever we were doing was like pretty pretty crazy and i would never spoil that for anybody who was interested in this game you need like go and play this game it is really good i've tried some of the yeast games in the past um i couldn't really stick to any of them like i'd get maybe like an hour or two in and then i just kind of fall off of it but this one feels like one that a lot of people could get into and a lot of people could finish and have a good time with hmm. unless it really changes at the end <laughs> but i'm i'm hoping that it sticks this uh this pattern all the way through if you are all right with that section that happened then you will love the game okay i am okay with it <laughs> if you're not like for me it was like i was really excited about where i was getting with the village and then i was like I want to go. No, I want to do. I want to do my village. <laughs> so, but um, maybe we're talking about two different things. Are we? Okay. We might be. This was a huge moment in the storyline plot, and ch- it it altered everything. Oh, in th- oh, this is uh... the thing that I really don't want to spoil. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, I'm a, it really, I really need to be it, quiet right now. Yeah, that was an awesome, oh, it's crazy moment. Yeah, I, I, I did, I did get like um a new, a new villager joined at the end of it, but um. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking about something else. I think uh, <laughs> I don't remember what chapter that happens in, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm assuming you haven't got to the thing I'm talking about yet. So probably not. Okay. <laughs> I'll be quiet. This section, I don't think, I don't think they could replay the same thing that happened in this section again. I don't think it would have the same impact. <laughs> I don't think so. Either. If it, if it did, I'd be like, wow, this game really. I, really... I forgot about. Uh, yeah, that was a freaking 
crazy thing that happened. I agree. That was awesome. It's, it's good. It's good. The game's good. I like it. Um, but that honestly, um, I think that's all I've really played. So what about you, Boston? Uh, I have not played anything of note this past month. Oh, no. It's a, a little, a lot of Division 2 and a lot of Destiny 2, but both of those are kind of in the same spot they've been for a while. Um, I'm super deep into Destiny 2 still, and I'm not very deep in Division 2, uh, mostly because I'm deep into Destiny 2. <laughs> so I uh, kind of can't fit both of those in my life. But Division 2 is still really good, um, but I'm nowhere near the end game in that, um, which seems really great, and uh, people seem to really like it. Um, but I got Destiny 2, and we got another piece of DLC in less than a month, so, you know, I got to get through this DLC first. So, <laughs> uh, grinding and grinding. Uh, but let's talk about releases for the month of May 2019. Yakuza Kiwami 2 is out on PC now, came out on the 9th, and that seems like it's about it. <laughs> so, Oh no, what is... Yeah, yeah, sort of seems like kind of a, a quiet RPG month, but a good month to ca catch up on games like Ease 8. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to news stories. Uh, first uh, up here, uh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne has been announced, and I'm hoping Mina knows far more about this than I do. <laughs> I don't, okay. but I'm I, I I I've heard of it, but I I haven't actually like looked into it too much because I've I'm actually gearing up for uh, Final Fantasy um, 14's ah uh, right expansion. <laughs> yeah, it it primarily seems to be a it their lar their first large expansion um, for yeah. consoles. They're going to be bundling this and the the base game together. So I mean, it's that level of expansion pack. Um, Coming out for PS4 and Xbox One, and I, I think the PC release is the same, I don't know, on September 6th. Oh, sorry, PC release will follow sometime in the winter, which is a bummer. Um, I guess uh, new higher difficulty Master Rank Quests, uh, which take place of G Rank Quests, um, is a Wyvern Ben Barrow, and uh, uh, re returning monster... Nargakuga? Nargakuja! <laughs> okay. <laughs> there are people who, who love that guy. I hate him. Okay, well... People love him. <laughs> yeah. I, it looks cool. I mean, it looks like, you know, Monster like, Hunter World Ice version. You know, it looks... <laughs> it looks pretty great. Uh, speaking of what else looks pretty great, Sony showed off more of the Final Fantasy VII remake. I think we got a trailer that was maybe a minute long. Nothing super long, but... Boy, does that game look real good. Um, I can't wait to play it in five to ten years. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, I'm, what I'm surprised about, so for anyone that doesn't remember, um, CyberConnect was developing this originally. They Something happened, and uh, Square Enix has pulled it back in-house, and the rumor was that they restarted development, but who knows. Um, they're still saying it's going to be episodic, which is uh, surprising because they're only showing... You know, as uh, Optimus Servo and chat says, it covers, like, the first 15 minutes of the game, though. Um, yeah, like, it, it shows very much, like, the Mako reactor attack, and that's kind of it. Um, but I, it looks cool. The battle, you got a little bit of a peak of the battle system, which looks uh, sort of maybe like Final Fantasy 15 ish with moving around and attacking stuff, and it's not staying in a place turn-based, which we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> Could be could be good um but man graphically that game whew, that game looks hot so we will i <laughs> i think it's coming i think it's still coming out on ps4 and xbox one um but i i don't entirely know for sure so I don't know. they said they were gonna talk more about it in june and yeah. like i think the statement i read something like you'll find out more in a month in june and on our schedule to release which uh, we'll get to see the same trailer again, right? Yeah, in June with a date at the end. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, they they have E3 next month, so I'm assuming if there's any time to release a release date for the first episode, uh, if there is one in the pipe, that's probably the best time for that to happen. 
I just try to temper my expectations for for that game because otherwise I'll be constantly disappointed. <laughs> well, especially with them <laughs> putting out an episodic, I think my expectation is probably the first episode is Midgar and the Escape, and then maybe if we're lucky, a little bit of the open world stuff, but not much. I'm, I'm. I, I know some people are fine with it. I'll just wait until it's all done. Because yeah, I, buy a PS5, get the complete collection. <laughs> I, I, like, I cannot stand the whole idea of like playing the game and then having to stop and right. wait. Because I would yank my hair out. Well, especially what? for a game we've played before, you know. Yeah. What if, because uh, Square's interested in diving as deep into our pockets as they can, mm-hmm. they release special collector's editions for each episode. Oh, I don't know if I I don't know if even I could follow that rabbit. Hole. I could buy the collector's edition of like the the complete thing, but a complete one, yeah. Like, what if each one comes with like a statue of a different? Oh, I know that's party. exactly what. That <laughs> yeah, would, that statues would don't get me. Steel books get me. Like you put like a steel book with a hologram on front and like the spines. <laughs> when you line them all up, it says it has a up. Final Fantasy VII logo, and then I'll be like, oh no. What if it's all... like a. You know, like how um, whenever you're getting a book series and you get the first book and it comes with, like, the big cardboard thing to put all the other oh, books no. in? How they used to do with anime DVDs? Yeah. What if they do that, that with... Uh, uh, that might get this me. This release. I'm a, I'm a sucker for dumb packaging. I'm, I'm too poor for this. I, don't, I will I, I, uh, I'm that. also too poor for this. I don't. Maybe that's why I'm playing a lot of Destiny 2. <laughs> I've already paid for that. <laughs> uh, next news story, Persona 5 The Royal finally mostly formally announced um yeah Alice has been teasing this for about the last two and a half years um P- coming out on ps4 october 31st of japan early 2020 for uh the west big part seems to be a new region of uh, tokyo to explore uh a region of tokyo i'm not going to dare to try to pronounce um a new uh companion so they'll join the um phantom thieves um, and there's like some new NPCs in school and stuff like that. And, uh, they will finally explore the third semester, uh, that was sort of cut out from Persona 5 for s- spoilery story reasons, uh, that we definitely won't get into here, but, um. And, and the most important part to me. What's that? Female main character option. That's, that's not a thing. They. I thought they brought it up in an interview. No, Did they that's the that? that's the new that's the new um, oh, lady. No. Yeah, that's the new thief. Because that was my ex- I, that was my excitement I, was like this lady. I thought they cool, talked I about pe- both. Oh, did they? I thought they said both, based on what I read, that because they they talked about how there was going to be a new female main character, and then people were like, is it that one? And they were like, no, she's the companion, but there's going to be a main character. I got I got confused. See that. It would be really great if Atlas would take some of these um, <laughs> websites and interviews and stuff that's going on in Japan and translate them and bring them out here because the con- there has been confusion between is this new lady you announced the main character? And they're like, well, no, they, they no. join the Phantom Thieves. And that's right. the end of what I heard. But if you're saying that there's oh, another no, main character so, option... The real, interview I saw talked about there being a female main character and then it also said who is not the one that we've seen is what like what they've made sure to emphasize but i don't know if like that's changed so there's a polygon article titled persona 5 director gives disappointing reason for passing on female lead right oh okay so they they did change okay so then the first one too confusing at least so i'm guessing the first interview or whatever must have been a mistranslation probably and that's the biggest bummer with this stuff is like they gotta they gotta be better about this stuff well you know see Catherine full body's uh controversy if you could address this stuff for steam no Um, no Catherine full body the remake yeah but but there were people mad that it wasn't ever coming to steam but they released the i guess the the, classic version the classic version to steam but they're not bringing the full body one yeah full body's controversy is is a spoiler and potentially terrible, but it's not out here in the West yet, so we're not not entirely sure of the the full context. But we won't get into it. But um, yeah, Persona Five: The Royals seems interesting. Musim uh, wrote uh, shared an article on uh, Twitter a couple of days ago. The the 
again, a translation error was sort of like, yeah, if you have a save, like, you can just skip to the new stuff. And now Atlas is saying, like, no, man, if you, if oh you have a save, gosh. like, you, you get special gifts, but we really want you to play the entire experience, including the new stuff, all over again. And I was like, I'm, I'm not sure I can, man. Yeah. Well, That's 150 hours. And that insinuates that this is going to be, like, this is not going to be DLC for Persona 5. This is going to be a new $60 title, uh, no. is what that insinuates. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that um, based on, like, Persona 4 <clears throat> Golden. But, um, yeah, I, <clears throat> Alice is going to milk Persona as much as they can. Like I, So it's, it's, it's like 3 and Fest, basically. Like right, yeah, up, exactly. If they want to release a $60 DLC, like, I would actually still do that, like... Right. The difference, like, they've, like, Fest was great, Gold was great, like, there's no reason for me not to believe that this won't be great in its own way, but, like, you're they're on the same platform, like, Persona 4 right. originally released on Persona 2, like, yes, right. I, I mean, they could have orchestrated it's, it to where you could have transferred your save game there through a, a series of flips and such, but, right. like, this is... Here's another PS4 version of Persona 5. You can't use your old save file and like two years money. later. And they're probably going to say on top of that, okay, you can buy the base game for sixty dollars or the extra special game for one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. And I'm, I don't know. Like I've over the years, I've really uh, like that's been kind of the last series where I just buy everything. Shin Megami Tensei that comes out stateside, whether it's good or bad or whatever, I just buy it, yeah. find out whether I'm going to play it, and I this may be my breaking point. Like I, yeah, I guess I'll see what the price point is. I'll see what they actually do, and what the real situation is. But it to me, this looks like them doing ancient freaking techniques from from prior days, and they need to update their thinking to what modern games right. are doing. Yeah, I mean, I'd almost rather not play Persona 5 again unless it comes out and it's like there's it's twice the game it was before and it's like radically improved I'd rather save my time and money until SMT 5 which I know is very far down the road but I played Persona 5 I, I platinumed it like I'm good I'm I don't need to unless again unless it's radically different I don't I don't think I'll be picking it up I mean I know there will be multiple new uh tarot card people what are they called commandants commandants yeah confidants confidants yeah <laughs> your s-links uh, <laughs> yeah uh I, I don't know i bet it'll be cool i'm just irritated i'm sure i will get over it and i'm sure i'll be one of the suckers that buys the stupid hundred dollar <laughs> version but like, right it's still very i will i will buy the collector's edition for it but i'll yeah i'm 100 percent going to buy the game there's no way i won't unless it comes with a plush morgana and then i'll buy it That'll be. I mean, the, that'll be where they get me. The last one did. Yeah, I already. Oh, have did a it? Plush Morgana. Yeah. I, it's like I got a Plush Morgana one. back there somewhere. It's like a keychain one about yay big. I, I totally forgot about that. that. It's it's probably <laughs> sitting on top of my blow up teddy. <laughs> uh, and lastly, uh, Atlas announced another Persona Five game, uh, initially titled Persona Five S, which was a real D move troll uh, <laughs> job because oh. everyone was like, "All right, Persona Five is finally coming to Switch." Nope, it's Persona Five Scramble coming to PS4 and Switch. It's a Musou game, um, yeah, which is cool. I think that will be a cool title. You could have picked literally any other title, and people would have been probably a lot happier with that. Yeah, um, I am but. interested in this game that I like some of the Musou crossover stuff. One of the things that um, is weird to me is like, why is this just the Persona 5 characters? Like, when right. I get, like, not that the Gundam Musou games are great by any means, but they have like a hundred Gundams in those things <laughs> right. and like 60 pilots to choose from. Like, right. Why don't like you Persona just queue it up? Yeah. You could you could honestly put all the personas, even the Persona One characters, <clears throat> oh, in yeah. there, and and people would be like, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, I I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't understand what they're doing, and like, because I assume they're, it's not like we're gonna have equipable. Like they're probably just gonna have their main persona with them. You know, they're not yeah. gonna put in the five hundred demons or or I'm sorry, personas, um, right? Whatever they are, but I don't know. I'll probably get yeah. it. Switch it'll, it'll like be a interesting. Good yeah, as long as it runs on Switch, runs well on Switch, that'll be pretty cool. But I, I don't know. That's it's 
one of those ones that comes out and it's sort of like, okay, cool. Like Persona 4 <laughs> The Fighters. It's like, all right, yeah, sure. That's weird, but it'll probably be good. Uh, but that's all of our news stories this month. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at pickinguptopixels.com. Everywhere to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page. Patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones or numbers get all the cool behind-the-scenes stuff. The $5 a month tier is the uh, recommended one. You get uh, you get everything on that one. It's only five, five, five bucks a month. It's cheap. Super cheap. Um, uh, why don't we talk about Musum? Where can we find you out on the internet? Uh, you can just go to my main hub for all my musical things at jbaudio.net. And Mina, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitch or on YouTube under Mina K.O. Rocket. And you can find my shows at e1m1.com. And we'll see you all next month. Bye. Bye.